going on? So, we are talking today about working on our range and sound and projection, right? Uh, I get a lot of students that come to me, they want to talk about how do I increase my range? I'm having a problem, you know, getting to this upper register of the instrument. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos beforehand, I always talk about making sure that we are thinking forward. It's always about forward motion, right? So we want to make sure that we're thinking that the notes are further in front of us, uh, whether we, we're playing notes that are above the staff or we're thinking further in front of us if we're thinking about notes that are below the staff, plain and simple. Um, I've been teaching for about 25 plus years now, and I've come across many students that come through this uh, this this door of working on range. Um, a part of this book that I'm creating right now will actually demonstrate uh, or give you some exercises to work on that. And so I'm going to demonstrate a little bit today uh, one of those exercises. And literally for me, as I watch students struggle with range, I realize that the best step to use is the half step. It is, to me, it's simple. When I'm thinking about how I want to increase uh, my ability, uh, whether it's technique, but specifically here we're talking about range, I think about adding one extra plate as if I was uh, I was in the gym lifting weights, right? I'm not going to just jump from 10 pounds up to 100 pounds. It's not, it, it doesn't work that way. Your muscles do not develop the way, and we are athletes with using these muscles here, wind, and the whole thing, right? So what I started to do is I started just adding half steps to that actual particular exercise I just did. And within that, there is also this slur component. Because for me, working on the upper register of the instrument, uh, you have to use fast, fast wind, or some people want to call it air, your fast airstream, right? The tongue is involved as well to help pivot at the at the top to really uh, center those notes. Uh, so I incorporated the slur that goes along with it. But every uh, time I move forward, I'm only moving up by a half step. And in doing so, I'm able to slowly see the progress uh, in a matter of weeks, actually. If a student takes this exercise and they do it a, a, on a daily basis, it doesn't take a lot of time. Three strikes and you're out rule, meaning that if you are forcing it about the third time doesn't work, do not keep trying because you're going to beat yourself up. And that's not the goal, right? So you can do this with the metronome. I take it out of free time. to hold that note out to to use to, to really push uh, more sound through there, right? So we're just gonna add a half step to that. We're still starting on middle C. We're gonna go to G, we're just gonna add the A flat to the top. He's like, I, you know, I'm having tr trouble getting from A flat to A. This is where you do the work, right here. Gordon method where they would have you do these arpeggios and, and crescendo and right when you got to that last note man whatever you have left you really moved a lot of sound through that note okay so that next half step we're going up to B flat Make sure you move your wind through through the top of the note. We're not going to do 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 do. We're going to do do e a la. Make sure you move your wind through through the top of the note. Now, 
making sure you lose a lot of wind through that sound, right? And we keep going, we keep going, we keep going, right? Um, I know that this works. <laughs> I had so many students that struggle with this and as we were coming up with different ways, because every student learns differently, um, but as we were coming up with different ways of uh, kind of skinning the cat, trying to figure this out, this is what stuck the most. I started using this with a lot of my students. I started seeing great progress uh, with these young people uh, and not only sustaining the note at the top, uh, but really getting the sound that they desired. Um, when I think of like great lead trumpet players, the first one that comes to mind for me personally is Snooky Young. Snooky Young had the all around sound as a lead trumpet player and somebody that plays solos in the section as well. Like that to me, and it was this round sound. It wasn't this really thin, brittle, bright sound. And that's some desired stuff from, from other players. Other players really dig that. I, I'm not that kind of player. I, I enjoy this round core to playing in the upper register when I'm playing lead trumpet. It's important to me uh, because that's the kind of sound that's not only going to blanket the band, but it's also going to direct the ensemble when you're playing. Or if you're playing in a small five-piece section or a three-piece section, it will still blanket the section but lead with direction because you have control up there. So I hope that helps. Uh, be on the lookout because we got more stuff coming to you. All right. Thank you.